So what we're going to do here, we're going to demonstrate the Model 32 bender, the hydraulic version. Um, we demonstrated the, mo the uh, Model 32 in the manual version a little bit earlier. This one here um, is the what you're going to have to go do. Let's say you're going to bend that 2 inch, quarter inch wall tubing that we talked about earlier. You're not going to do that manually. It isn't going to happen. Um, but with the hydraulics, it's no big deal. Um, what we're going to do, some of the features real quick in the machine, like the Model 3 and the, 30, and the 32 manual, it has an adjustable degree ring right here, so you can rotate it. Um, there's a pointer that bolts onto the die. We're not going to be putting that on right now. You can see it in one of the other videos. It's just a piece of rod um, that bolts in with a single bolt. And you adjust it to zero. Fairly, fairly simple to do. All right, so what we're going to do, um, oh, a couple other features. This machine here is designed with very heavy, heavy pins. Um, to give you an idea of the difference between the Model 3 and the 4 and the 32, this is the diameter that we use in the Model 3s and the um, Model 4s. They're rated up to about 2 inch tubing in the Model 3, 2.5 in the Model 4, 120 wall. This is the pin in the Model 32. They're all 100,000 psi alloy steel. This pin will allow us to bend extremely heavy material, um, which, which really makes the rock crawler guys happy and some of the truck guys. Um, for instance, that 2 inch DOM, quarter inch wall, in my knowledge, this is one of the only benders in the world that'll do it within a reasonable price anyway. You know, she'll also handle two inch square tubing. Let's show you that. This is two inch square tubing that we're bending with it. It's getting ready to go to a trade show. It's all nice and painted. It's 188 wall. Um, no problem. We do not make tubing bigger than two inch just for the fact that you can't get it out of the die. It wedges in so good. But the two inch works extremely well. Um, this is what two inch quarter inch wall looks like. And, you can probably tell it's some pretty stout stuff, you know. Um, what we're going to be bending today is just two inch, looks like two inch 120 wall, you know. Now this feature has the anti spring back pin device in it, and um, that's basically this device right here. It's a, uh, essentially what it does is there's a there's a ramp right here that's going to ride through the through ramps in the die set, and as she rotates, it will lock down prevent the tubing from backing up. You're going to need that with that really heavy wall tubing because it wants to spring back like crazy. You're also going to need it when you're doing very thin wall tubing to keep it from wrinkling. To install this could be simpler. Just basically um, match it up with the holes in the die. That die there happens to have four inch pin centers. So we're going to pop it up. We're going to take this right here. I don't know if you can see it real well in the video, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of keyed, keyed right there with the thing so it's kind of hard to mess it up. You're going to put it in, drop this thing on there, open up the set screw a little bit so she'll go down. Alrighty. And what we're going to do, we're going to get it up a little bit higher than we need it and we're just going to let it sit there. Now, let's go ahead and put the die in the bender. Take the pin out. Notice the link's not going to fall out of the out of the die. It's no big deal at all. Um, now we take the die. This happens to be a 180 degree die. She's pretty stout. Um, you can see the kind of quality of JD Squared prides itself in uh, machining quality right there. Um, 28 years has pretty much told us how to machine these things, what kind of groove profile. A lot of people are under the misconception that a die is a round groove. It is not a round groove if you know what you're doing. Um, and consequently, we think we know what we're doing and they're not round. They're a special profile that helps uh, maintain the ovility of the tubing on the outside while she's bending. All right, what we're going to do now is we need to drop in the drive pin. All that's going to happen is very simple operation. Is the bender's going to hydraulic cylinder's going to push on your drive link. She's going to rotate around. What we have to do now, let's go ahead and adjust this little part right here. Um, we're going to drop her down, and if you notice, she's going up and down, and she's going to ride up and down these pins. You can see it going up and down right here. Now, if she tries to rotate, she won't. She won't rotate. All we're going to do is we're going to let it fall into a hole and we're going to tighten the set screw down. Let's see. Alrighty. Now, if you turn it and just turn it, she'll stay up and you can rotate the die back to, back to where you want to go. At this point, we're going to pull the clevis pin and we're going to re retract the die back a little bit until we can get the clevis pin back in there and now we're ready to go, um, ready to put our tubing and all in. What I like to do is put the tubing in and the U-strap on before the follow bar goes in the bender. Just easier to work with because you've got a lot more room over here. There's not much of a, a problem handling it. Here's your U-strap right here. Obviously, they're made very stout, especially for a two inch because we know there's people out there that are going to be bending that quarter inch wall. 
Also, all of our two inch dies are additionally braced just for that fact. You won't need it for regular two inch tubing, but if you pop in that quarter inch wall stuff, you're gonna need it. All right, what we're gonna to need to do now is put on the use wrap, drop it in the hole, rotate her back. All right, there you go. The, the two's in there, and then, let me see, can somebody please hand me that adjustable wrench real quick? Obviously, we're not gonna make no money if we were in Hollywood. So let's see. All right, what I'm doing now, this bolt here, I'm tightening it down, putting a little bit of pressure on it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna prevent the tubing from sliding backwards through the die while you're bending. If that happens, that, you know, bad things are gonna happen. Um, you're gonna get wrinkling on the inside, you're gonna have all kinds of problems. So that, that kind of prevents that from happening. Another thing, do not lubricate the inside of the dies. Leave them dry. We don't want this tubing to slide through the die. You can lubricate the outside if you want, uh, but it's not necessary, and I'll explain why that is. This is our follow bars right here, wiper dies, followers, whatever you happen to want to call them. Um, we machine them. We, we cast and machine a special alloy right here that is basically, it's an anti-galling, um, self-lubricating alloy. For instance, this is a highly machined surface, you can hear. I can just scratch the heck out of it all day long, and you'll need, never see a scratch, which means when you're bending your expensive chrome molly and DOM, you don't have to worry about tearing up your tubing. Um, back in the old days, before we learned this technology, we machined them out of steel, and um, we, we had our share of problems, to be frank with you. All right, what you're gonna do now is every follow bar has machined an angle in it. And what that angle is, is we developed a computer program that calculates the angle that we need for the optimal, um, optimal bending of the radius and the tube, and that's what we machine into the follow bar. Both these inserts are identical, so if you happen to somehow destroy one, um, it's basically relatively inexpensive. You just buy the one you replace. I can't remember the last time we had to do it. Anyway, what you're gonna do, every follow bar is gonna have the size of the tubing, what hole it goes to, your holes are numbered one through six here, and the word top. You also have a pin here that will help hold the follow bar up into position while you're loading tube. This one here happens to say hole five. We'll put it in hole five, drop the die in it, and at this point we're ready to start bending. So let's turn on the hydraulics. This happens to be our hydraulic pump unit that we sell. Um, very nice unit. Um, now what we would do, let's say we had our degree pointer. And it would go right here, it's nothing more than a brass rod. Um, picture in your head or see a model, the other Model 32 deal. What we're looking to do, we've got to take this play out, you know? So we're going to bump it until we have no more play, but we're not actually bending, you know? Then, simply, we're going to, that rod will be here, we're just going to adjust it to where it's on zero, tighten the bolt down, you know? At that point, um, we now start bending. And what we're going to do, we're going to engage this, there's a pin here, and we want it to drop in the pinhole, just like it did right there. Um, now what's going to happen? Watch it rise as we bend. See it rising? We machine ramps into the die to correspond to the ramp on the pin so that she'll lift smoothly. And what we're going to do is we're only going to bend far enough for that pin to drop and no further. So I'm going to kind of look at it here and see when it drops. Right there. Now watch what happens when I release pressure on the bender. If you notice, I, the tubing's not moving, which means it's, it's going to probably you're not going to have any issues of wrinkling at all because it can't develop the air gap in the groove. We're going to retract it back to the next pin location and we go again. Bend, bend, bend. We'd be watching that rod go around. We use yellow engravings or markings, I'm sorry, not engravings, but markings on a black background for the fact that I can look over and I can very easily see that brass rod on that yellow marking right there. Um, here we go. We're going to hit that. Bam, we drop, repeat, just pull it back, let her retract, she'll retract by herself, it's not that big of a deal, but if you want to help it out. It looks like we've actually already gone about 90 degrees, let's bump it a little bit more, since we're just doing a test spin, we don't really care. Alright, at that point, let's go ahead, rotate this thing here, get her in that up position, take the pin out right there. Track that. All right. Now what we can do is put the um, I probably should have thrown it on the ground. Let's see. Put the pin in right there. And we can just pull it, pull it back. Get the tubing out nice and easy. Go ahead, remove our bolt. Alrighty. 
set it down. And voila, that's a two inch, six and a half inch radius bend. We design all of our dies, we try to maintain as minimal amount of depression on the inside. It, the depression has to be there. You can't get rid of it unless you're going to run a mandrel style bender. And on two inch tubing, you're looking at a Model 2 Pines around $125,000. Um, this is what we're talking about, ability right here. We don't want flattening. We want a nice oval shape and, you know, pretty much for your race car so you have a strongest bend possible. And that is, that is the operation of the Model 32 Hydraulic. This happens to be my favorite bender. Um, hope it will be yours too. Thank you.